Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. I hope you guys are doing well out there. So we have snow, apparently, in July. Actually, at the end of July in China, in Beijing. Uh, this is not really your typical normal situation, I would say. Now we see over here, the uh, question, snow in July? Well, meteorologists say it's more likely to be small hailstones, which could occur in a severe convection weather event in summer. Uh, looks like snow. What do you think? Well, I'm sure weather scientists have all the answers, thank goodness. As we see here, Beijing had five minutes of snow, real snow, not hail or sleet, but hard snow. This is unheard of during the month of July. The locals see this as a much more sinister warning. And, uh, you know, here we see it's not even cold out. I got my coffee. I'm good. So we have Tropical Storm Isaias impacting the Caribbean on its way to Florida. And as we see the probable path right now, it looks like it might be a, a East Coast event, Atlantic Coast event. We're going to keep an eye on this as it gets closer. But the current models are showing it's going to have about 75 mile an hour winds. So category one storm, as we flip over here, take a look at the spaghetti models, you see what looks to be a likely path. And of course, anybody from Florida on up to North Carolina should be aware of this and even farther up the coast. As we've seen, it doesn't take a lot nowadays to cause a tremendous impact. And here's some photos coming out of Puerto Rico. So the storm passed by there. Over 312,500 people estimated to be without power. As you can see, the roads chewed up. You know, when, when the ground is saturated, and in this these times right now, so many areas are just going through one wave of flood after another. There's uh, a couple of videos here showing the National Guard rescuing, well, this one, in this case, an infant. And then over here, the National Guard is rescuing a more of a toddler. Just in incredible floods globally that we are seeing all around the globe. So, you know, you might say, well, that was just a tropical storm, but look at the damage. Mm -hmm. I know if I if I didn't know better, it's almost like the water is coming from inside the earth and being pushed out. It's so scary looking. And of course, you know, being in the desert, an area that gets about six inches of rain a year, uh, you know, we don't live this. But so many people across the, the globe are living it. And in areas, you know, some areas like Bangladesh every year does get hit with floods. But it's the scope and the level. So we see 4 million people affected in Bangladesh, 119 dead. As you can see, just rooftops here with the flooding. And let's send our prayers and best wishes for all of our lovely friends and family over in Bangladesh. And so here we see there is a uh, link if you want to help out with um, helping support the people that are being affected by this. There are so many refugees all across the globe now. Nearly 2,500 people evacuated. Record rainfall hits northern Japan, triggering floods and landslides there as well. Yeah, it, it's just like what we're seeing in China, which is just so devastating. And India, you have over 4 million affected over there. This has been an extraordinary, uh, a very, very tough season over in India. All this is adding up as far as the crop losses go as well. And jumping over to South Korea, look at the floods there again. Look at the, the cars that have to be abandoned. How many times have we seen people you know, just climbing out of their window and jumping into a boat? Thankfully, somebody coming by rescuing. And so, you know, this is downstream from Three Gorges, and you have animals struggling, you know, cows trying to survive, and many, unfortunately, not. And if three gorges go, you know, as many as 400 million people could be uh, downstream from that dam that is basically f facing just such an ominous 
situation with the rains that just don't stop. And I would, you know, I wouldn't do this. That's just me. Uh, we've we've seen so many vehicles swept away, people swept away trying to cross. Like in this particular instance, pretty ominous. You know, how many people have lost their lives? As we have said, the floods, the water is the number one killer. Not earthquakes, not lightning, not even tornadoes. It's it's people drowning in floods. You know, so again, I would not have even considered doing that. And so hopefully somebody will learn the lesson and not try to make a crossing like that in the future if, if you're faced with a situation like that. And here we see Mogami River overflowing, following record downpours. And this is in Yamagata in Japan as well. More houses just collapsing. Mumbai records its wettest July since records began in India as well. 58 inches of rain in a month. And in 28 days, 58 inches. And how about a, more than 125,000 lightning strikes in Washington, D.C. in just two hours? Um, that makes me wonder about this plasma earth that I've heard about. I think I want to look more in, into that, but that's really curious. Well, you know, the plasma discharges definitely increase in these times. As we've said, we have a apparent magnetic pole reversal underway. The magnetosphere is in decline and the sun's in a grand solar minimum. So we don't have the solar wind protecting us. So everything is getting more intense. It's, it's <laughs> starting to look more and more like the movie The Day After Tomorrow in some cases. You know, before the deep freeze, you had some chaotic, crazy storms that are going on. And some areas are starting to get the deep freeze, too. Norway records coldest summer in nearly 60 years. Well, it's uh, 108 right now outside here, so it doesn't... Uh -uh. It, it's hard for us to fathom that, but snowball earth events linked to drastic drop in suns. Radiation, there you go. It's not about carbon. It's about the sun, as my really good friend Dave Debine would say. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about the sun, guys. And so there was two times in the last 700 or so million years where the entire globe was encased in ice. And again, you know, in Death Valley, that's not something you could kind of, you know, get through your, your mind there. But at the same time, we see just amazing changes going on. The second straight year of flooding threatens yet another year of crops in Mississippi. You know, think about what happened in Nebraska last year over in Iowa. There's just incredible flooding. And so more crop damage. What's coming is going to be massive food shortages. That's just obvious. Right now, China is out there buying up everything they possibly could, as well as getting their military ready to roll. And that's what happens in these times. People get desperate. Bee population decline threatens major crop yields in the U.S. and global food security. And we've been watching the whole situation with the bees for years. As, you know, they are not the only ones uh, that are declining in massive numbers as far as the insect world goes. But the bees have such an important purpose. And as we see here, crop yields for major crops such as apples, blueberries, and cherries are being limited by a lack of pollinators due to the decline of wild bee population. That's definitely something that is another very, very ominous sign. So what's the one tree that every survivalist should plant? Well, obviously there's not going to be one particular uh, tree for all. Definitely not a one-size-fits-all. Uh, again, in a desert situation like this, we're not going to get a lot of things that are going to be able to survive the climate. So you have to look at your climate first, and then you look at your needs too, and look at your needs as to the future. Because what happens if, uh, again, obviously food, uh, if it gets to the point where there's rationing, which will probably be happening, it is happening now in some ways, you know, where they're limiting you to, of course, with toilet paper and hand sanitizer for, for so many areas, but other things as well, limiting perhaps the purchase of things like milk or okay. water. Yeah, they were limiting water too. So you want to look at nutrition, what you could utilize medicinally as well. And firewood, depending on where you are. 
And then the secondary values, long-term tree health. How easy is it to maintain as well? You know, what happens if the grid goes out? Uh, you know, again, all those people out there that are depending on wells. So it does your well have a hand pump or does it have a solar generator? Uh, maybe you have a generator you could operate it on, but what happens if, you know, there's a lack of gas, lack of propane? Just think about all those things as well. So, and then common trees, and again, look to your climate, your grow zone, and see what's going to work. Um, but some, some suggestions here is apple, black walnut, maple, mulberry, oak, white pine, and white willow. So, again, as they say here, you may disagree, and again, it's so important important to look at where you are living and what's going to be able to do okay there. So I want to thank everybody for your support on Ko-Fi and also our Patreons who keep us above water and keep us making videos. We love you guys. We appreciate you very much. Stay, stay prepped out there. As always, God bless and namaste. Namaste.